Hello there, Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com, and I'm about to speak with the undefeated 7-0 Mark the Bumblebee De La Rosa, as he is headed to Combate DS on January 19th. So we're going to give Mark a call and find out what he's been up to since his last fight. He had a little bit of a controversial experience with Legacy Fighting Championship, so we're going to get his side of what happened with that and find out what he has in store for Combate Americas. Mr. Mark De La Rosa, how are you, sir? Good. Thank you for taking out the time to join me. You are undefeated, headed to Combate Diaz to take on Ivan Hernandez Flores on January 19th. Now, uh, kind of a crazy experience in your last outing. You were at Legacy FC 61. You were scheduled to have a championship fight. Some craziness went down at the weigh-ins. You opted to not go ahead and fight. And, you know, there, like Michael Chavello kind of came out afterwards, like, you know, saying some not-so-pleasant things. I mean, yeah. what's, what's your side of what actually went down with that? Man, I mean, long story, trying to put it behind me, but, I mean, long story short, there's a lot of things people don't know what happened behind the scenes. Words are spoke between me and the matchmaker. Uh, Peterson weighed in three times. The first time, he was three and a half pounds over. So I was like, all right, cool. I had to do interviews. So I, was, I had to stay in the room. But I was like, all right, cool. Either I'm going to get some more money or, you know, he's going to suffer a little bit more and I'm going to get another, I'm going to get, I'm going to get more money. So either way, it's good. I had to stick around for some interviews and stuff. So I'm doing my interviews. But the first weight, there was like, 80 people in the room. Everybody witnessed him this way. Okay. All right. I'm doing my interviews. Room's dead. Nobody's in there. It's just me, my girlfriend, her parents, my manager, and my coach. And then it's Peterson's camp with like, there's like 10 of them and two people from Legacy. That's it. The guy doesn't even try to make way. I'm doing my interview. He steps back on the scale, still over three and a half. He's butt naked, laying down in front of everybody, just naked, just dying. Think about what he's going to do with his life because he couldn't make the weight. And then uh, right when he misses weight the second time, there's nobody in the room. Nobody, there's no interview. There's no. It's just his camp. That's it. So right when he misses weight, he's sitting down on the floor naked. I'm doing my interview. Uh, I get off the phone with the matchmaker. And he's telling me, Mark, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry you didn't make weight. We can't give you no more money. Fights off. And then I announce it on Facebook. I'm sorry, guys. Fights off. Figured we weren't able to make it happen. Blah, blah, blah. And then Peterson tries the third time. The third time he tries, he's still over so then he's sitting down naked, and right when he misses weight, like he literally sets up the scale one minute, lays on the floor. He doesn't even put his clothes back on. He's laying on the floor naked. His coach picks a fight with my manager, so nobody's there. So obviously, my camp, we're breaking up the fight. As we're doing that, I see his camp. They're grabbing the scale off the main stage. It's a big old scale. It's not a small scale. It's a big scale. They pick it up. They move it around the corner to the bar area, and they're yelling out 134.5 after he just weighed 138 and a half one minute ago. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, cool. Can I see it? Can I see it? They're like, no, no, no. They have him run off. I go talk to the commission. There's only one guy at the commission. That guy is just stuttering. He's like, uh, 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 uh. He doesn't know what to say. Then I get a call back from, call back from the matchmaker, and he's just like, Mark, it looks like it's official. I'm sorry. It's legacy versus you. Who do you think they're going to believe? And, you oh, know, wow. I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't got me again. I'm not going to. I'm not. I, I didn't feel like playing in their game. I mean, I knew the outcome was going to be. But I knew all the drama at my camp. We knew it was going to happen. But, I mean, I just turned 22, live and learn. I'm only going to get better when you're sitting at, hopefully, God willing, you're sitting at 15, 16 and 0 with finishes. I mean, going to get a call up, whether it's UFC or whoever. I'm going to whoever's offering the most money. Right now, Combate's doing great. They want to promote me. They want to push me. They're offering me triple what Legacy was paying me for a title. And I'm not even fighting for Combate's title. They're paying me really, really good. So I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Okay. Now, do you feel like Michael Chavello was kind of, and others were trying to like pressure you into taking it, even though, you know, there was a little controversy? Never, I never received anything, any calls, anything. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's, I put myself, I've, I've got no, again, I would be more than willing to fight Peterson again. I'm not scared of the guy. I'll fight whoever, whenever, but the way everything went down, the way I was treated, the way, I mean, how that, uh, Peterson's camp and that team, they sell a lot of tickets, but I sell a lot of tickets too. But they get a lot of favor, they get a lot of pull because they sell tickets and stuff. You know what I mean? It's always, they're the A side and whoever their team's fighting is always the B side. You know what I mean? So I, I didn't feel like playing part in that game. I can't feel like playing part in that game. So 
It didn't go through. It didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, but again, the, them talking all that crap and saying all that again. I'm only 22 years old. I'm not. It's not like I'm some old fighter still trying to make. I do this full time. I do this for a living. I mean, I'm only getting better every day. I'm only getting older, wiser, stronger. So, I mean, again, we'll see. I'm gonna get the last laugh in. I put in the work, and the fights are coming. Now, uh, your girlfriend fought on Legacy's 61 card, and her yeah. opponent missed weight, Mackenzie Dern, and she ended up losing that bout as well. Again, we knew they brought, I mean, obviously my girlfriend has more fights and stuff, but they, we knew they were bringing Montana, they are bringing her in to lose. You know what I mean? We knew that. They're bringing her in to lose. Obviously, Mackenzie Dern was the favorite. They're bringing her in to lose. But luckily, Mackenzie, we knew she wasn't going to make weight. Legacy, Legacy, again, they're trying to push Mackenzie, so... They offered my girlfriend a big chunk of change for uh, Mackenzie to miss weight. They they called us two days before knowing that she was going to miss weight, and they're like, "Can we please make this fight happen? What do you want? How much? What do you want? How much money do you want for us to make this fight happen?" You know what I mean? So we knew it. I mean, again, the way all that stuff that happened down with me and stuff. You know what I mean? It honestly, my girlfriend needs me in her corner. It needs. I mean, again, she needs me in her head. I wasn't there for the fight. Again, the matchmaker had, at the end of the day when he called, he's like, "It's probably not a good idea." You go to the you go to the fight because you don't want any uh, confrontation and stuff with the camps and stuff and people think that you're gonna fight and stuff and blah blah blah. But I think I think again them saying all that stuff on TV and them from what I was told I mean they knew I wasn't fighting they're over there playing it out like I didn't show up but they're doing that they were doing that so I sold over ten thousand dollars worth of tickets they didn't want any of my fans to get refunds. You see what I'm saying? So they played it out like he made weight so my so my fight fans wouldn't get any other money back. Okay, it's it's definitely sounds like a sticky situation to be in, and you're super young too, only 22 years old. Do you have maybe some advice to give to other fighters who might find themselves in a similar situation? Uh, the only thing I can say is, I mean, find a good, make sure you have a good manager, make sure you have good coaches, you got a good support system. You, I mean, you got a strong mind, and find a promotion that wants to back you, wants to push you, not drive you under, or not be the B side, or Play favoritism. Okay, and do you still stand by your decision of not fighting? Do you still think that was the best decision for you? Yeah, I do. Again, I mean, a bunch of I, I love proving people wrong. I mean, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna again, like I said, I there's no doubt in my mind. A year from now, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be getting the last laugh. I mean, I put in the work. Things, I mean, it wasn't happen, didn't happen. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. But again, I'm gonna keep, keep putting in the work, keep racking up the wins, and again, I'm going wherever, wherever uh, signs the biggest checks. Yeah, you're seven and zero. You've already displayed some pretty uh, nimble footwork and exceptionally fast hands. You're willing to change levels, take the fight to the ground. How did you uh, link up with Combate Americas? Uh, they honestly, my uh, my brother-in-law is good friends with one of the promoters, uh, Baloo Vargas, and uh, he hit me up. Uh, he heard about the legacy situation, and again, nothing like that has ever happened in my career or anything. I've never. I don't know, that was just, the whole situation, I don't like bringing it up, but the whole situation was just fun hurt. It was seen, it seemed fake. When it was happening right in front of my eyes and I witnessed everything, everything being said, phone, phones and stuff, it just didn't seem real. But, I mean, he called me that night, whatever, say they wanted to talk. A week went by, they called me up, they offered me a, they offered me a, a fight deal, a five fight contract. Hey, it was great, real, real great, and uh, that was that. I'm excited. Okay, do you know anything about your opponent yet? He's 8 0 uh, undefeated as well. I know he's an undefeated guy. Uh, he's probably a local favorite. Um, I know he's shorter than me. I've never fought anybody shorter than me, so I'm pretty excited about that. Everybody I fight is five foot nine and taller. And again, my boxing still looks just as great going against taller people, so I'm excited to finally have some reach on somebody because I never have reach on anybody. So and I'm to, really super excited about to that. To that note, are there any thoughts of maybe moving down to flyweight? Uh, there is, there is. Again, like I tell everybody, every time I get asked about it, I, I can make 25, but I don't want to make it now for, I can say, little money. I don't want to kill. I'm still young. I'm, my body's still kind of growing. So, again, if I'm going to make that cut, which I cut might suck a little bit, 35 is not a bad cut, but that 25-pound cut will suck a little bit. So, if I'm going to make that cut and put my body through that, I want to get paid really good. So, Okay. I'll wait on. I mean, there's nobody. I mean, I have. I can compete at 25 and 35. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Now, where are you training at for this? Uh, I train out of uh, Dallas, uh, or like Fort Worth, uh, the DFW area. 
out of War Room, Genesis Jiu Jitsu, and Reyes Boxing. I actually did half of my camp with Team Alpha Male. Then I went out to Vegas and did two weeks out there with Ricky Lundell at Gorman uh, Wrestling. Okay, awesome. Now, you got a prediction? How will your Combate Americas debut pan out? Oh, it's going to end with the finish. There's no, I'm looking 2017. I mean, I made it a goal. I'm, every fight I get, I'm looking for a finish. I'm looking to make a statement. I'm going to try to finish everybody. Whether it's the first, second, third round, I'm going to finish everybody. So it's going to be a finish. Okay, now, you got any sponsors or people you want to give a shout-out to? Yes, uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to Doc's Mouthguards, Alliance Reconstruction, Reyes Boxing, Genesis Jiu-Jitsu, War Room, MMA and Fitness, Legion of Honor, uh, my coach, Albert Hughes, Tony Cabello, Stephen Wright, uh, Simply Fit Mills, uh, Body Armor, Strike Tech, and Doc's Mouthguards again. All right, awesome. Now, how can people follow you on your journey? What are your social media outlets? Uh, Facebook, Mark De La Rosa. You can... I got my personal account and my fan page, both Mark De La Rosa, Instagram, Mark underscore De La Rosa, Snapchat, Mark De La Rosa 94, Twitter, Mark De La Rosa. Awesome. Well, Mark De La Rosa, thank you so much for taking out the time. Undefeated 7-0, headed to Mexico of all places, Combate Diaz. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you for having me. So there you have it. The undefeated Mark De La Rosa, headed to Combate Diaz. On January 19th go check it out in the meantime you can read me over at bloodyelbow.com follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado if you like this interview you can subscribe right here and if you like bloody elbows content you can subscribe to their channel right here go check out this interview go check out this interview now go be a good person